Now for more on that ban that's being imposed by a growing number of countries around the world on the 737 MAX aircraft in the wake of the Ethiopia Airlines crash. Former Airbus A380 captain James Nixon joins us in the studio. James, thank you very much for coming in. They're still looking at the black boxes, clearly. That's where the information is. But what's your take on what might have happened or how worried we should be? The reason I'm worried is because I was privy to a conversation between a 777 pilot uh, who was a friend of one of my ex-colleagues and he was lining up on the runway behind that aircraft in Ethiopia in a triple seven, and he heard the guys talk on the tower on the tower frequency. They said we're having an emergency, unreliable airspeed, we can't control the aircraft, and then they transferred to the departures frequency. So that's all he heard. Mm. So as soon as you hear those things, you realise, hang on, this is very similar to to Lion Air. How recently was this? That was this, the day of the crash. Was a, this was right. This on the crash. crash. That was right. the Ethiopian okay. crash. So this 777 was lining up behind it afterwards. Right. So normally as a pilot, we would never make any announcement or anything like this until the investigation was way down the track. Yeah. But in this situation, we've gone, hang on a second, this is very similar to Lion Air. Why is that? And that's why we're scared about when it. When you talk about unreliable airspeed, what, what do you mean by that? Because there have been reports about unreliable airspeed of, of this plane taking off before the crash. That's well. right. And also the Lion Air one. Mm. And the problem is, and some, the reason America wants to keep flying, great. They're the world's best pilots. And Australians, we have a reputation around the world of being astronaut, astronauts. You know, We reckon we're pretty good. But this industry has to survive for the average pilot on the average day. And the industry has moved forward so that we no longer have multiple failures. We only train for single failures. Multiple failures are so rare. The chance of having an engine failure and a wing fall off, so rare. So we only train for multiple failures. What we about witnesses who are saying they saw flames, though? That doesn't seem to match no. a, a stall override. No, and witnesses are hideously unreliable. Uh, after crashes like this. One guy said it went straight in, nothing. Another guy said he saw smoke. Didn't say flames. Another guy said he saw the plane going around and around. Well, Now, Boeing has said the planes are airworthy. What do you say to that? Well, two crashes of the same type in six months, um, I don't think they are. So what should happen? Australia has said... Fiji Air can't fly in anymore, uh, Silk Air can't fly them over Australian airspace. Does Australia need to be taking any further action at the moment? No, and Australia is one of the world leaders. Um, this idea of grounding this aeroplane, I asked, called for it yesterday and they did it that day. Who would have thought that the Australian CASA had the, had the courage to do this? Because there's a lot of pressure to keep flying. But until we find out what happened, let's just ground the aeroplanes, fix the problem, and get them flying So it's again. like, like uh, we've seen car recalls over the years. Mm. Would you like to see that happen, all these planes go back to Boeing factories with a problem worked on? Well, it's mainly just a software thing. So yeah. they've got techos who are going to send a uh, computer card out and fix it and hopefully... Are you confident that it, it is simply only a software problem? That will fix well, it? Yeah, I think they can fix it with a software problem. I don't know anything about engineering. But uh, the problem we have here is a 1967 designed aeroplane. It was certified then, mm. hasn't been certified since... Bits and pieces are certified. It's probably a time to rule a line, tell them, sorry, certify this as a new aeroplane, because it clearly is. Just finally, James, what does something like this do within the pilot community? Most pilots are, have confidentiality agreements. They can't speak out. What's going on behind the scenes? That's why I'm speaking. There's 105,000 flights happened in the world in the last 24 hours. What do you reckon those pilots are talking about in the cockpits? We all talk about this stuff as soon as it happens and we analyse what we would do. But this is a situation where you have to do two procedures at once and you've got to recognise what's happening in a short time. James Nixon, thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure. OK, over to you. Uh, we're asking you this morning in the wake of this horrible disaster in Ethiopia and the Lion Air crash in Indonesia, are you uh, thinking twice about flying? And are you thinking twice uh, once the ban is lifted on getting on this particular model of aircraft. Uh, Graham says, as far as I'm concerned, I won't fly Malaysian Airlines. Of course, sadly, the, the airline has suffered a, several crashes over the years. I won't fly an Indonesian airline except Garuda. And I would not get on a 737 MAX 8 until this obvious issue was sorted. Otherwise, Graham reckons 
any airline and any plane is fair game for me. Mm. And uh, Brimlad says, I wouldn't fly on a 737 MAX. There's obviously something seriously wrong with the manoeuvring characteristics. Two planes in five months. Well, let us know if you've got some thoughts about whether it's affecting how you're flying, what airlines you're choosing, if it's on your mind.